lights, is that she came into office proposing a wildly regressive, budget-destroying tax cut for the richest people in corporations. The public overwhelmingly rejected her plans, and the markets, well, they went absolutely batty, with the pound plummeting to a record low against the dollar. And essentially, her government fell apart because of all that. She was forced to fire her finance minister. He was the one who had trotted out this big new economic package and, and, and a close ally. And then her home secretary, which is kind of like her attorney general, resigned all in the space of a week. So then there was nothing left to do. Liz Truss tucked her tail between her legs and resigned in disgrace at that podium outside 10 Downing. And what was especially striking about her resignation, and this is where things get interesting for us, again, observing from across the pond, is that it was driven more by the polling than by politicians. This week, a new poll showed that in a general election, were one to be held, say, this week, her party, the Conservative Party, which, of course, has ruled Britain for much of the last several decades, would be practically wiped out. The Labour Party would take a 36-point lead, leaving Conservatives with as little as one seat in Parliament. That would be a more than 20-point swing from the last general election in 2019. And not just that, Truss's personal approval rating tanked from about 30% down to just 12% this week. Now, this is the basic hydraulics of politics functioning in a way that has just been largely suspended here in the US. Of course, it's also important for us to closely watch what is happening in the UK because of the parallels here. Now, just listen to Donald Trump's own director, the National Economic Council, now back on cable news, of course. The US midterm elections cavalry arrived early in London. What do I mean by that? Well, the new British Prime Minister Liz Truss has laid out a terrific supply-side economic growth plan, which looks a lot like the basic thrust of Kevin McCarthy's commitment to America plan. Okay, you hear that, America? That's not me talking. That's not liberal MSNBC host talking. That is Trump's old economic advisor, Larry Kudlow, who's advisor of the Republican Party and Economics for Year, saying the Kevin McCarthy agenda is the same as the Liz Truss agenda. So they have the same agenda. And if you think what is happening across the pond sounds like a carnival with the crazy, destabilizing, dangerous actions of the Conservative Party, which is entrusted to government but can't seem to do it, just wait until you see Kevin McCarthy's House of Representatives, which will, I assure you, be much worse. We've already seen this play out a little bit. In 2015, a divided Republican caucus drove Speaker John Boehner to resign his post, retire from Congress after 24 years to go spend more time with his cigarettes and red wine. Three years later, they pushed his successor, Paul Ryan, into an early retirement. The Republican caucus remains completely unwieldy, ungovernable. And after November 8th, they will likely have a vanguard of a dozen or two or maybe three, like, genuine extremists outside the bounds of what we had once thought of as normal, like having a couple dozen Marjorie Taylor Greens, And they will have control, largely. And get this, the House Freedom Caucus, which is the caucus of the most extreme members of the Republican Party, are already preparing to welcome new members, sending candidates this 52-page guide on what to expect and how to be a member of their far-right group. Caucus Chair Scott Perry of Pennsylvania writes, quote, the simple truth is that it perfectly suits some of you are unaware or unprepared. Some will urge you to be a team player by falling in line with leadership and doing what you're told. You'll be warned not to rock the boat by raising questions or concerns with leadership's agenda. Basically, be telling them, be ready to revolt. So remember, when you're voting in this election, and you're voting in your congressional seat, you're sort of voting for your representative, but you're much more you're voting for whether the Republicans are going to control the House of the Democrats. Kevin McCarthy, is he going to run one-third of the parts of the federal government that are elected? And if you vote to put the American version of the Conservative Party in power, or they are going to, and I again, I assure you, make British politics look calm. Because here's the thing. They will have every incentive to precipitate crisis after crisis without facing the same repercussions. There will be no resignation. There will be no collapse of the government. They'll just be there. And that is a recipe for doom.